Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. This will be an interesting flight that I had running into a huge sinkhole while I was on a cross-country flight. And I'll use this video to go through my thought process and how we ended up making a safe landing. This is the PW-5. It makes an excellent cross-country trainer. It has a 34 to 1 glide ratio, which means if I was a mile up, I could travel 34 miles. But in reality, we really don't use that number. We use a much smaller number to be conservative when we're flying cross-country. When I ran into this huge sinkhole, I ended up landing at Emory Ranch Estates, which is about 14 miles from TSA. And it was all part of my flight plan. If I didn't find any more thermals, I'm definitely gonna land here. It's a lighter, friendly, private strip. The PW has about a 44 foot wingspan and it's really light at about 400 pounds empty without the pilot. So it makes it easy to transport if you land out. So anyway, let's look at the next image. And this is the information I'll be displaying in real time. I'm using a built-in GPS data logger and adding it to this video to make all these effects. So starting on the bottom left, that is ground speed, not air speed, so don't get that confused. GPS can only calculate ground speed. The top left-hand corner is our flight time. In the center top is the compass heading. On the right-hand side, you'll see that red dot with that blue line. That's my actual flight to scale. The red dot indicates that I'm over the top of Emory Ranch Estates, and that's where I landed out. On the top right hand corner, that's our rate of climb indicator as measured in feet per minute. And on the bottom right hand corner, that's the altimeter as measured above sea level. Okay, let's start the flight and I'll go through my thought process as I'm flying on this cross country. But this time I'm feeling pretty good. I've climbed to 5,000 feet and I'm just short of Lupscombe Airfield where I could land out in case I didn't find any thermals. But at this point, I knew I could make my next waypoint. My next checkpoint is Emory, and I'm about eight miles from that grass strip. And I know from this altitude I can make it without any additional thermals or lift. So at this point, I'm just converting that height energy into speed energy. You'll notice that red dot at the top is getting closer to Emory. Now at this point, I am descending if I do find another thermal at this altitude or even lower, I'm going to take it just to give me that additional height energy to continue on my cross-country flight plan. So it's important to understand that in this flight plan that I have these land outs available to me. I'm not really going to try to just land out anywhere in a field or somewhere if at all possible. And that's why I use these grass strips or private airfields as checkpoints. So if I do run out of lift I can still make that airport. I'm still headed west toward Emory. As you notice I'm still descending. I haven't found any additional thermals at this point and I'm getting lower. But I don't have any concern about where I'm going to land because I've already got it figured out. And there's the airport right over the right hand side below if you can see it. And I've got altitude to spare. And for the last few minutes I've been in this huge sinkhole. It seems no matter where I fly, I'm continually finding sink, anywhere between 500 up to 1,000 feet per minute sink. So when there's a lot of sink, there's a lot of lift nearby, but I can't find it. So I'm making a search pattern looking for that last minute thermal, because I am running out of time. So at this point, I'm making an abbreviated pattern over Emory Airport and I'm still looking for that last minute thermal. Again, I'm just finding more and more sink, and the lower I go, the less the possibility of finding additional thermal to get back up and keep the game going. So now at this point, I'm about a thousand feet above the ground. It's still possible to find that last ditch thermal, and the important thing is, if all else fails, I can still make Emory. And they have a nice asphalt runway there, of course, it's 1,600 feet long. And maybe for the beginner, that seems like a pretty short field. It's not a problem with a PW. And you'll learn all that as part of your training. 
So understand the altimeter is set above sea level, but here at Emory we're about 900 feet above sea level, so in this example we're about 800 feet above the ground at this point. At this point I found one thermal, but really couldn't center it or anything, and I knew if everything failed I could still make a 360 turn and still be able to make it to Emory with a safe landing. And that's what I did. And I wouldn't be trying to find a thermal this low to the ground unless I definitely had a airport uh, land out available to me. So now, after I try this last ditch thermal and don't make it, I'm going to focus on the landing. So I'm moving toward Emory at this time. I'm looking for traffic. So at this point, I'm going to do what's called an abbreviated pattern, which simply means it's not all exact, you know, a downwind, a base to a final. It's just part of your training and something that you'll learn about. Okay, we're going to do the same landing that we would do anywhere else. It's just part of your training. We don't change anything. We keep the air speeds the same. I want to keep my air speed the same, about 60. I've got the spoilers open, and right now I'm doing a slip with full spoilers. I know I have that runway made. At this point, I know I have the runway made, so I'm going to close the spoilers. Make sure I safely get over the tops of those trees, because you only got one chance to get it right. Now I'm going to pull full spoilers, slow down, reduce my spoilers to 50%, hold it off the ground as long as I can, and touch down, hold full up elevator and heavy braking, and that's all you got to do. I'm going to continually fly the aircraft until I get to a full stop. So now I'm going to call TSA and hopefully get an aero tow back. And thank goodness John was available and came to rescue me. And I'll tell you folks, that's a luxury when you're flying gliders and you land out at a, a strip that you can get an aero tow. That is certainly a luxury. And look at look at John doing that slip too as he's coming up the landing. Did you notice that? That was pretty cool. So getting that aero tow is one of the luxuries that's available, possibly if you're a club member. The PW makes an excellent cross-country trainer, and our club has three of these. And can you believe it? It's only $21 an hour to fly. $21 an hour. That's amazing. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. And be sure and look up my other videos about flying gliders. So just look up texassoaring.org for more information about our glider club. Hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you in the air next time. Bye-bye.